Well, we do have some big updates this morning. The first true football Saturday of college football here, guys. It was announced yesterday, the ACC adding the three schools, and Florida State has come out, and they are apparently pissed off, saying that they voted against this expansion. Guys, I think Florida State is pretty much guaranteed to be gone along with Clemson next offseason. The only question for the ACC, do they lose anyone else, possibly NC State and North Carolina? Although it is worth mentioning that NC State did change their vote to allow those three teams to come into the league. So the ACC now expanding there. Cal announces it will not receive full ACC revenue shares until its 10th year in the league, 2033, with Stanford and SMU in the same situation. So what a deal here for the ACC adding these teams, and they're not going to be receiving their full share until 2033. And even by that point, I mean, you know, the grant of rights deal is relatively close to ending. We've talked about how crazy long it is. Well, they're not even going to be receiving the full share until 2033. The deal ends in 2036, so pretty remarkable. And you can see, I thought this was a pretty cool, uh, you know, visual to look at. This shows the center team, like where the center team is in each conference, how far it's shifted west. You can see the ACC shifting all the way to Tennessee. The SEC staying pretty much the same. I would imagine the SEC really wants to stay down south, especially with the Big Ten going all over the place. They're going to say that, you know, we're still just a Southern Conference. That's how we want to sell ourselves. They can easily add Clemson and FSU and still have that perfect Southern footprint. The Big 12 slightly moving west, and then the Big 10 taking a big step towards the west going all the way into Iowa there. You can see that. Uh, and then we do have stuff on the AAC, the American Athletic Conference. You know, they lose SMU. It's a tough loss. Their commissioner has come out, issued a statement. He's pissed off. I'm kidding. He's just like, oh, whatever. We knew we were going to lose SMU. And now we've got the American Conference coming out. This was yesterday morning. Army, the current independent is the league's top expansion target. It makes perfect sense. I think this will 100% happen. And Army just recently announced that they're getting a big-time stadium renovation. So this fits in perfectly with that whole thing. And apparently the Navy-Army game will still be considered from what I was reading. Yeah, here it is. Annual Army-Navy game would still potentially be played as non-conference in order to preserve its traditional designation as the FBS's final regular season game. So I guess, you know, if they, it was a conference game, they couldn't play that extended week, so they're going to be preserving it like that. And again, Army in the American, maybe they could try and go for someone else, but right now, it makes perfect sense. It doesn't surprise me that they would be targeting them. And then we've got the Pac-12, which... Oh my goodness, it's still alive. I mean, come on. Can we just put it out of its misery at this point? But it, listen, this article is going to say it does make sense for Oregon State and Washington State to try and keep this conference alive because of the added benefits you get for being a Power 5 league. And technically, you do get two years even after if you lose a bunch of members to be still considered a Power 5 league, even if you're under that eight-team threshold. Uh, we've got a story here. Can Oregon State, Washington State keep the Pac-12 alive? Or is the Mountain West inevitable? So just to answer that, I think the Mountain West is inevitable. Both of these teams, well, I guess let's just get to the article here. We've had a number of conversations about what our path forward might look like in retaining the Pac-12 and its potential assets and status. That's according to Oregon State's AD, and those are items that certainly weigh into the decision of others to want to be a part of the new Pac-12. Impossible, right? Perhaps not. According to an industry source, the two may now be the sole beneficiaries of a significant amount of revenue coming the Pac-12's way. For one thing, the NCAA men's basketball tournament units, its teams, have a cured stay with the conference, and those units are distributed over a six-year period. That source estimates the number around $90 million over six years. The conference is also due a significant higher share of college football playoff revenue than a group of five 
five league for at least two years from the current contract per the college football website. The number last year was around 80 million for each Power Five conference. <laughs> so they're trying to get 80 million split up between Washington State and Oregon State. These teams just won the lottery. They're gonna keep they're gonna keep the Pac-12 together as two teams and just split the massive share from the college football playoff revenue. This is not going to happen. Uh, it would take a unanimous vote by 10 FBS conferences and Notre Dame to amend the contract prior to its 2025 expiration. We can guess the one league that would oppose it if it still exists yet. Yes, the Pac-12 would be the one to oppose that. Uh, the conference has two years left on its contract with the Rose Bowl for which ESPN paid an annual $80 million average over 12 years beginning in 2014, as well as deals with its other bull partners. It's not clear yet whether any or all have clauses based on conference composition. And of course, the decades-old Pac-12 brand and logo theoretically hold more monetary value and prestige than the Mountain West. The goal for Oregon State and Washington State would be to lure the most desirable programs from not just the Mountain West, but also the American without having to get into bed with their bottom feeders. A potential conference with, say, the Cougars, Beavers, plus Boise State, San Diego State, Fresno State, Tulane, Memphis, Air Force, and Colorado State would not be of Power 5 caliber, but it would perhaps be more attractive to a TV partner than the current Mountain West plus two. Uh, and, and of course, the issue there is all of the buyouts that those teams would have to do from the, especially the American Conference, because the Americans TV deal is through 2032. So that's going to be a bigger, you know, buyout problem in terms of that. NCAA bylaws require a conference to have at least eight members, but there is that two-year grace period to get back to that number. Silly as it sounds, the Pac-12 could theoretically operate as a two-team conference for two years uh, with Oregon State and Washington State largely making their own schedules. So they would de facto become independents, but still getting major payouts because there's a two-year grace period Oh my goodness! This would be this is the lottery for Oregon State and Washington State, but there there's no way that this is going to happen. So the idea is that they would stall for two years, they would face each other, and then schedule a bunch of you know just random non-conference games. You would think there'd be some type of special clause. How do they get a two-year grace period? I would say the second you drop below eight members, your conference is done. You're not getting any of those payouts. That That's not a, a conference that's honestly at this point lower than 10 members is, is pretty ridiculous, especially be, to get those special privileges of being a Power 5 and get a Rose Bowl playoff and college football playoff distribution. It just doesn't make much sense. Kind of sounds like a weird rule. Why would they get a two-year grace? period that's a flaw in the system unless they can somehow amend it and say no this is special because the conference has been completely destroyed maybe they go to some type of overriding vote and say we can't allow this to happen this is ridiculous there's two teams in this league it's a fraudulent league let's just call it what it is and I don't think this happens at this point. I mean, if they do this, it would be hilarious because they just be they would be independent teams getting a bunch of revenue for being in a so-called Power Five league that really doesn't even exist. So we'll have to say, and it makes sense if you're Oregon State and Washington State, absolutely you should explore this. You just got. I mean, everything's falling apart for Washington State and Oregon State. It is really sad because we knew that these were the two bottom feeders, but like a year ago, or, or check that, two years ago, before any of this realignment happened, before USC and UCLA left, the original TV deal that the Pac-12 was going to get, it was probably going to be like 45 or $50 million. If you've got Oregon, USC, UCLA, Washington in that conference, you've got the late window 1030 Eastern games. Th that, that's a very attractive thing with USC now with Lincoln Riley and Oregon with their NIL. They were going to get good money. And they've gone from that, possibly getting 45 to $50 million and being like, you know, kind of a lower tier team, kind of like Rutgers, Vanderbilt. Maybe you don't deserve 45 or 50 million per year, but it is what it is. You're in the conference and you've been a member. You've gone from that to possibly going to the Mountain West and getting six million per year. 
I mean, that's a brutal gut punch. So you can understand Washington State and Oregon State trying to circumvent and say, maybe there's a flaw in the rules. Uh, and then it says, but if nothing else, 2026 is also when the Mountain West current deal ends. So, hey, that's perfect. You you know, you get this two-year grace period just to collect all the Power 5 checks as a de facto independent, but technically you're still in the Pac-12 as a two-team conference. And then once the two-year grace period ends and the conference officially dissolves, you join the Mountain West on a brand new, you know, upgraded TV deal because right now the Mountain West is at $6 million. If they do add Washington State and Oregon State, it would get bumped up at least a little bit just based off of the inflation. I mean, the Mountain West last negotiated their TV deal probably like eight or nine years ago, so it's just going to get upgraded No, pretty much no matter what because the price of everything is going up. So kind of an interesting story here. We'll have to see if this ends up happening. I, I would imagine still the most likely scenario is that they would be joining the Mountain West. I kind of thought that would pretty much happen immediately after the news came out that the ACC was adding Stanford, Cal, and SMU. But the trickle-down effect from that now is looks like maybe they're trying to just stall and collect all the money as a de facto two-team uh, Pac-12 league. That's why we haven't heard anything about them going to the Mountain West. And, and then maybe because the timing is impeccable, when the Mountain West TV deal is up, that's in two years, they can just join the league and get a decent TV deal. I do not think they're going. You know, there was also a thing, I saw a tweet, it was confirmed that the ACC is not interested in either Washington State or Oregon State. Which, you know, I kind of spec. it's just the ACC, man, they're, they're travel. I mean, it's just, it's your typical conference realignment, I guess, but it doesn't seem like the ACC wants to add any more teams out West. So I guess Stanford and Cal are stuck with horrifically bad travel and they're not even getting their full media share until 2033. That is a brutally bad deal. I'm sorry. Like, I guess they were really desperate, especially Cal, I can see, but Stanford, that, that is a tough pill to swallow to do that, where they're not even going to accommodate you. I mean, think about what happened with USC and UCLA. Not only do they upgrade their pay significantly, going from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten, but the Big Ten then accommodates for them with the travel and adds a West Wing, adding two more schools to completely mitigate the problem there, and it just doesn't look like it's going to be happening for Cal and Stanford, so that it's a tough pill to swallow for sure, but the update is, because of all this, we've got a trickle-down effect, we have the American losing a member, they've got to replace them, looks like Army is that team, and then we will see what happens with this Pac-12 with Washington State, Oregon State, I mean, are they really going to try and do this and, and get off on a technicality and say, listen, we have a two-year grace period. Yes, we have under eight members, but there's still, it says that two years. I mean, seriously, there should be some type of law written in. Like, if you get under six members, the conference, you, you, you immediately, you, it's done. There's nothing there. You're not getting any any TV money for this. You're not getting any share from the Rose Bowl, right? Like, the Pac-12 has a share. Imagine if the Pac-12 still kept their Rose Bowl bid. And, and and it was just Washington State or Oregon State auto get making an auto bid to the Rose Bowl. Well, I get, actually, you know what? That doesn't matter anymore because we're going to the twelve team playoff, and the Rose Bowl is going to be part of it. But but imagine, imagine if that happened. Oh my goodness! I I still think they're probably going to be in the Mountain West next year. But it is something interesting to look at. Either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.